Hi everyone. Making millions is not such an easy task as modern celebrities make it look. Usually, this requires a huge amount of time, patience, and talent. However, sometimes people make money literally out of nothing. In this video, we're going to tell you about the lucky people who manage to get rich thanks to their creativity and, of course, a tiny bit of luck. Let's get it on. Kyle McDonald Today, there are many coaching courses to help you develop your personality, improve time management skills, and networking strategies. Maybe some of these programs are overrated, but the story of this lucky guy proves that the ability to negotiate with people can help you a lot in life. In 2006, Kyle McDonald from Canada managed to pull off an amazing deal by trading a paperclip for a house. But first things first, Kyle was inspired by the children's game called Bigger and Better, where kids try to trade something they have for something more valuable. After all, cost is a relative thing. One man's trash is another man's treasure. And that's how Kyle's year-long adventure began. In July 2005, he made his first deal. He received a funny ballpoint pen in the shape of a fish in exchange for a red paperclip. On the same day, Kyle exchanged the purchase for a makeshift doorknob in the form of a smiley face. Then he swapped that for an outdoor stove, given to him by a guy from Massachusetts who also treated him with a nice steak. But what happened next? Turned out that a former marine sergeant from California had long been looking for this particular model of stove. Of course, Kyle happily handed it to a new friend in exchange for an electric generator. But who might need this device, you may ask? But Kyle found a man who wanted to have his own electric generator. Here with uh, Marston in Maspeth, Queens, New York City. We've got the generator here. He is going to trade me one IOU fill that keg with beer and a Budweiser sign. In return, he gets this generator. Deal? <laughs> Then Kyle got an email from a fellow named Michael Barrett, who wanted to trade his snowmobile for the beer keg. At that moment, the winter in Canada was in full swing, and a local magazine quickly contacted Kyle and offered him a trip to a ski resort in exchange for a newly acquired snowmobile. A little less than a month later, Kyle received a call from an enthusiast who was ready to exchange a ticket for a camper van. Kyle agreed. Then he exchanged the van for a paper, but not a simple one. It was a contract with a Canadian recording studio. Its owner just needed a van to carry gear while touring with his band. And then Kyle received a pile of offers. Turned out a huge number of people wanted to become pop stars, but one of the offers was particularly good. In exchange for the contract, an aspiring singer Jody Nant granted Kyle the right to live in one of the rooms of a duplex in the city of Phoenix for a year. Kyle could stop there, but he wanted his own house. And so, his journey continued. Kyle got lucky again. Turned out the girl living in the neighborhood worked in the cafe, which belonged to the famous rock star Alice Cooper. In exchange for renting a duplex, she invited Kyle to spend the evening in the company of a celebrity. It had seemed the offer is not particularly generous. After all, this is not really a purchase. But for a true Cooper fan, a guy named Mark, such an opportunity was more valuable than anything. Mark got a day with his favorite rock star in exchange for a rare snowball with figurines of members of the Kiss Band inside. But that doesn't sound very impressive, right? Well, it would seem that Kyle's adventure should have ended on this deal. But that was not the end of it. In July 2006, the lucky man got to meet a Hollywood director, Corbin Burnson, who just happened to be collecting such snowballs and was ready to give a role in one of his own movies in exchange for one of them. At that time, the story of Kyle's adventures had already spread throughout North America, and the mayor's office in Kipling, Canada, offered to give the role to one of the residents and guests of the city. And in return, give Kyle a two-story house. That is how, several exchanges later, Kyle got his own house. Thanks to his determination, Kyle visited several dozen countries, wrote a best-selling book, translated into 14 languages, and most importantly, proved that nothing is impossible, even if you're unemployed and only have one paperclip in your pocket. Gary Dahl 
The following story might sound implausible. Some call it one of the largest scams of the last century. But we have to admit, it's a very clever marketing strategy. After all, no one forced people to make this weird purchase. We are talking about the so-called Pet Rocks, a project launched in 1975 by the American advertising executive Gary Dahl. This man noticed that all his friends tend to complain about their pets. Then he came up with the idea to create the perfect pet who would not give the owner any trouble. You won't have to feed it, walk it, bathe it, or pet it. And most importantly, it wouldn't get sick or die. But what's the catch, you may ask? Well, this pet is a rock. <coughs> but while Gary's friends thought of this idea as a funny joke, Gary took it pretty seriously. Soon, he created a detailed manual explaining how to take care of a pet stone. You what? It contained witty and hilarious instructions. The best thing about it was the ingenious packaging of the goods shaped like cardboard boxes boxes, complete with straw and breathing holes. Gary then bought stones from one of the Mexican beaches at a nearby store at the price of one penny each. The concept was ready. Gary even managed to find investors. The time for launching the product was perfect, right before Christmas. People liked the advertising campaign for pet stones so much that in a couple of months, Gary managed to sell one and a half million boxes. Although the price was very low, all the profit went straight to Gary's pocket. After all, the manufacturing cost was almost zero. Although the hype around the boxes didn't last long and the company was soon closed, Gary managed to earn enough to buy himself a luxury penthouse and a premium car. So what's the secret behind this incredible success? Well, first of all, Gary was certainly a marketing genius. And secondly, at that moment, the USA was going through hard times. The Americans simply wanted to have a reason to laugh and the pet rocks were an excellent occasion. Rick Schwartz Marketing specialists learned a long time ago how to make money on people's love for beautiful numbers and names. Some people are ready to spend a large amount of money for special car numbers. Others shell out for a nice looking phone number. <laughs> In 1995, a businessman from the USA launched a project that still brings him enormous income. Back then, at the early age of the internet, Rick Schwartz decided to buy potentially popular domain names for advertising websites. But as the World Wide Web grew larger, he had an even better idea to start selling the domains themselves. Some of them, for example, candy.com, were sold for several million dollars. And all this is almost net profit, because in the mid 90s, such domains cost almost nothing. See for yourself, Schwartz's initial investment was only about $2,000. Over the next eight years, he earned $20 million, doing almost nothing. Of course, Rick owes his success not only to luck. Like a true businessman, he managed to identify an emerging trend long before it became popular. To do this, you need to have strategic thinking and entrepreneurial spirit. Alex Tew this story tells us how creative thinking sometimes prevails over business strategies. 14 years ago, Alex Chu from Britain decided to launch his own online startup to raise money to study at university. Alex created a million pixel website, 1,000 pixels long and 1,000 pixels wide. Each of the pixels cost only a dollar. He intended to offer the advertising spots to different companies and individuals, provided that the minimum block cost was $100. That is, a block measuring 10 by 10 pixels. And this idea worked. Companies rushed to purchase the advertising spots. A month after the launch of the site, Alex earned an incredible amount of $37,000. This was already enough to pay for three years of study at the university for business management. But Alex quit it after the first semester, apparently willing to learn the basics of entrepreneurship in practice. And he was right in doing so. The popularity of his website grew every day. All the renowned mass media of Great Britain and the world wrote articles about him, and market giants fought for a spot on his website. In less than a year after launch, Alex put up the last thousand pixels for sale on eBay. It was sold for an amount almost 40 times the original, $38.1 thousand dollars. Thus, a startup intended as a joke brought its creator millions. Alas, such ideas usually only work once. After his first incredible success, Alex repeated 
repeatedly tried to launch other viral projects, such as a book, which featured a million profile pictures of the internet users, but they all failed. Now, Alex creates various internet applications for meditation and sleep. They're reasonably successful, but it seems that so far Alex can't expect to earn another million anytime soon. Philip Ozersky Sometimes you just need to be at the right place at the right time, without even trying hard to come up with creative ideas. This is exactly what happened to Philip Ozersky. In 1998, he was a regular fellow at the University of Washington Medical College in St. Louis. He was an avid baseball fan. Over the previous three years, he had not missed a single game of his favorite St. Louis Rams team. But that evening, September the 27th, 1998, Phil decided to go see St. Louis Cardinals play against Montreal Expos at the Bush Stadium. And so he did. And this day became historical, not only for baseball, but also for Phil himself. Last year until next March in Florida. First and third, two out. At the Bush Stadium, with no fewer than 40,000 seats, Phil became the lucky guy who caught the ball thrown from the field. Not a simple ball, but the legendary player Mark McGuire's 70th home run ball. Since this was an absolute record in the history of American baseball at that time, the ball was immensely valuable. Philip easily sold it at auction for $3 million. As a medical researcher, Phil earned only $30,000 a year. Despite the sudden fortune and a real opportunity to start living like a millionaire, Phil has made six-figure donations to charities. He was also able to buy a vacation home for his father. Psst, dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the future? Do you love huge vehicles and can't imagine your life without robots around you? Then visit TechZone and you'll find all this and more. The link is in the description. You interested? Great. 